Hey, Lighting, have you heard? Mm, no. The Truck Show. We're going to show you what we know. We're going to answer what the truck. Because truck rides with The Truck Show. We have the lifted. We have the lowered and everything in. We'll talk about trucks that run on diesel and the ones that run on gasoline. The truck show, the truck show, the truck show, whoa, whoa. It's the truck show with your hosts, Lightning and Holman. This episode of the Truck Show Podcast, Have You Heard? is proudly presented by Nissan with the Frontier, Titan, and Titan XD. Nissan has a truck for every need along with the legendary Nissan durability. Test drive your next truck at a local Nissan dealer today or point your browser to NissanUSA.com where you can use the build and price tool to configure a Nissan truck that fits your lifestyle. And when you're thinking about adding power or improving fuel economy, Banks has over 65 years of experience. Whether it's cold air intakes or exhaust systems, tuning, throttle control, charge air cooling, lubrication components, and much more, no one offers smarter, safer, 50-state emissions-compliant performance parts than Gale Banks. You'll find the best engineered parts for your truck at BanksPower.com. And when you're looking for quality, full synthetic lubrication for your truck, AMSOIL has you covered with motor oil, lubricants and protectants, grease, additives, and more. AMSOIL synthetic lubricants deliver wear protection, engine cleanliness, and fuel efficiency that conventional oils simply can't match. Find out how AMSOIL synthetic lubricants can save you money and time by helping your vehicles run better and last longer than with conventional oils at AMSOIL.com. When it comes to lubrication, AMSOIL is the leader in synthetics. EGR now celebrating their 50th anniversary as a leading manufacturer of truck and SUV accessory products with headquarters right here in the good old U.S. of A. As an Australian-owned, family-run business with humble beginnings, EGR is now a global leader in the automotive accessory industry. If you're looking for window visors, fender flares, tonneau covers, lights, hood guards, and more, you'll find them all at EGRUSA.com. Hey, Lightning, have you heard? Oh, hell no! No, wow, I have not. That hit my brainstem. <laughs> I'd like to apologize for all of our listeners who were just subjected to that horrible wow, noise. That was great. I love that guy. Uh, all right. We got a lot to cover here in news, so we're going to knock through the list pretty quick here. Did you know that there were uh, too many Ram trucks that aren't coming off the production line in good shape and they have to go back to uh, get quality controlled and fixed in quarantine? No. What yeah. years? Oh, new oh, ones. Like right they're now? making right now. What? So wait a minute. Ram is not known for the quality. You're telling me it's getting worse? I mean, they're not They're not bad quality. I mean, they're, they're, and by the way, they've been winning J.D. Power the last couple of years. So they, they? Oh, their quality is way up. Anyway. But, but J.D. Uh, Power is like the first year of like- Well, uh, it depends. Nah, that's, that's just one thing. That's initial quality. They have oh, other ones too. Gotcha. All right. Anyway, uh, Carlos Tavares, CEO of Stellantis- Said sorry. Has been- No, he's <laughs> been fairly open uh, to different discussions. Uh, he made a disclosure, uh, I guess it'd be a couple of weeks ago now- uh, that he was talking that too many brand new trucks have to be repaired before it goes to the dealer. And he said that the uh, what they call the direct run rate at some Stellantis plants uh, is, quote unquote, not good. And that's not great. What the direct run rate is, it refers to the total number of vehicles that get the seal of approval from the quality control people without having to go back for anything, whether it's a paint blem or like a badge that's crooked or an uh, engine that won't turn on or, or whatever. Uh, the ones that are in perfect condition go straight to the dealer. Other ones go in quarantine. They're having too many that get pushed aside to uh, to get fixed. So. Okay, so these are not necessarily ending up in customers' hands. No, no, no. They get fixed before they go there, but okay. it, what it does is it slows down the production line. It makes it inefficient. Gotcha. Uh, Tavares said that there are a bunch of different issues that could be causing this, and it's it's a problem. Like the, the increase in manufacturing costs, the delays in delivery, all sorts of stuff like that. Every single time a human or a robot has to touch a vehicle in its build process or after the fact, it adds to the cost. Yeah, absolutely. What's also interesting is he said this. He says, quote, unquote, we have not always been able in the production planning to make a production mix that aligns with the sales mix. If we don't do that, if you don't align the production mix to the sales mix at one point in time, your inventory is distorted against what the real demand is. If it's distorted, some of the models and versions and trims, they stick in the dealer yard and then you have an inventory problem. And I don't know if that is partially because people want the high zoot uh, limited production trucks uh, like a TRX. 
And uh, they're like, no, no, you also have to buy work trucks. And then the fleets are like, we're not buying work trucks right now. And if you go down to the local dealer, there's a lot of stuff just sitting right now. So anyway, sounds like they've got some work to do over there. Um, That has just got to be a brutal job. I know from just a small aftermarket parts company how hard it is to predict how many you're going to sell yeah and you might do something you never know it could be one of a thousand market forces that like push sales beyond what you expected god they could have a yeah. youtuber this yeah. is the greatest and thing ever everybody all of a sudden they it. sell like yeah, yeah a thousand extra vehicles and it and it just devastates their inventory conversely if someone says it's crap then they just all sit there and collect dust so Tavares, uh the 65 year old portuguese businessman uh he said that quality is improving but the process has been, quote, unquote, painful uh, after they had to, quote, unquote, clean up the mess. And it says there's been supply chain interruptions uh, along with uh, quality issues at other factories uh, beyond where they make the RAM in Sterling Heights. Um, he said some of the other issues were the RAM 1500 mid-cycle facelift launch. So things are swapping over right now. And so it slowed down production to swap over to the new model year uh, with the mid-cycle uh, action on it. Another interesting thing is back in 2021, he did say that Stellantis would keep all 14 brands for 10 years, and they would invest in all of them. And whichever ones were profitable at the end of the 10 years were the ones that were being kept. So you know, Ram is in no danger. But so on the European side, brands like Lancia, DS Auto, and Abarth, they're not doing great. And then over on our side of the fence, we have brands like Chrysler. Other than the Pacifica, everything else is dead. So Sucks. what's happening over there? Ugly and uh, dead. Yep. And then, you know, not that Jeep is in danger, Rams in danger, but their sales are definitely down. What happens to Dodge if the new Charger uh, doesn't take off? So uh, they're in a world of hurt, especially with uh, the heads of state over there are basically kicking out all the Americans. and Make uh, some freaking more V8s, and dumbasses. Dra- and they're, well, they're draining. It's almost like what happened with Daimler Chrysler when they came in and bought, or Daimler when they bought in and made it Daimler Chry- uh, Chrysler and said, Oh, it's the uh, merger of equals. And instead, they sucked them dry. I feel like they're doing that. Stellantis is doing that to these great American brands. And uh, there's a world of hurt over there. And a lot of my friends aren't there. And it's uh, it's sad to watch, to be honest with you. All right. Too much on that. Hey, uh, Lightning, have you heard? No! <laughs> no, I haven't. Speaking of Stellantis, uh, they have begun offering buyout packages for U.S. employees. So you know what that precedes. Massive layoffs. Well, I mean, if if uh, not enough people take them, you know, that's uh, step one. Yeah. Step two, steal underpants. Step three, profit, <laughs> if you're familiar with South Park. Hey, Lighting, have you heard? Yes, 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 yes. No. no. Apparently, dealers are desperate to sell uh, Chevy Silverado Evalanches. Well, the only one that I have seen on the road with my own eyeballs. The one that was brought to your uh, work location that we drove? Nope. Had a uh, SoCal Edison logo on the side. There you go. So right now, apparently there are discounts of up to $16,000 under MSRP. And they're trying to uh, undercut competitors uh, by cutting that 20% chunk off. So that's, uh, that didn't look too good. I think mm-hmm. people want their trucks to be trucks. Just they want, they're, they're just, and they're also not great looking. No, they're okay ish. I mean, I saw it early and I was like, mm, you guys sure? Yeah. Uh, anyway, hey, Lighting, have you heard? No. No. Mm-mm. Apparently, uh, Rivian is no longer giving you a standard physical key or fob. Now you got to pay. It's an accessory now. No way. So it's all through your phone. All through your phone. That's super lame. Yeah. You can use the app or you can use the key card, but uh, no key. F- key fob, you got to pay extra. Hmm. I don't know if I like that. No, I mean, I know some people that do like, they use a remote start on their phone and they use it to unlock and unlock and whatnot. But I just, I think most people do need some I, I don't, physical object. I hate that, having to go through menus to do some t- simple task yeah. like opening my door. Like on the Aria, I have the key in the pocket. I walk up, it unlocks. I get in it. I walk away, it locks. I don't even have to ever touch and, it. And you know what else, too? If you're wearing gloves, you're in the Midwest or the oh, East, and yeah, it's freezing. You what are you going to fumble with your phone? Well, half the time your phone goes, it's too cold to operate. Yeah. It's mad. So, Or if it's too freaking hot. Yeah, have you had it. lately? I've had that happen twice. I, I was guess in Havasu. Have... It's got the thermometer on the front. That says I'm too hot and shuts off. I guess you get the key, the key card one. But eh, yeah, I still like having a fob. Just, I'm old school. Yeah. Hey, lighting. Have you heard? What you talking about, Willis? Uh, apparently, Arizona is suing uh, FCA and Cummins for uh, fraudulent diesel emissions claims and defeat devices. Who? who? Uh, Arizona. Man, that place is lurching purple. Mm. 
Yeah, that makes me uncomfortable. It's uh, seeking penalties from both companies. Uh, Arizona's Attorney General claims FCA and Cummins falsely advertised diesel Ram HD trucks to more than 23,600 buyers in the state. So according to this, it says that uh, it's the same thing with the illegal defeat devices falsely showing lower uh, uh, NOx levels under EPA emissions testing yeah. uh, than what the 2,535 trucks actually emitted in normal operations. So this is the conversation that we've had on the show before. It also says that the defendants uh, allegedly knew the conduct, placing the higher emitting trucks uh, with these defeat devices in the state of Arizona. So I don't know. Said there was uh, deceptive practices that harmed our environment and deceived customers, then they will not be tolerated, according to uh, Attorney General Mays. So who knows? It just sounds like uh, that that is the story that won't go away. Hmm. Hey, Lighting, have you heard? No, wait. No, I don't think so. Uh, apparently, uh, all the Ford recalls that have happened lately, the billions of dollars that we've talked about over the show, is now up to about uh, $25.5 million a day to Ford. Whoa. In... Uh, Recalls. $25 million a day. A day. Let, let, let that sink in for a second. It says that uh, recall and warranty costs hit $2.3 billion over the last three months, costing $25.5 million a day. Uh, that's up $800 million compared to the first quarter. Oof. So uh, we're going to pay for all that. Ford has... Uh, uh, you know, in new, in new vehicle sales, we're going to pay for well, that. Well, uh, Ford has implemented several initiatives to improve the quality so hopefully uh, they turn the corner on that because uh, that is a wild number. I wonder how much of this stuff is caused by human error, robot error, design error. Like, is, does it start all the way at, like, with, issues. with the mechanical engineer or yeah. the electrical engineer? Or is it just a numb nut on the, on the you know, assembling the thing that just puts the wrong torques back nah, on the they, they can't do that. No, there's no. no way to do that. They Every, like, gun and every tool is computerized and records every process according to every VIN. So when you pick up your lug nut tool and you go, Boop, it stops at exactly the torque and it records it. So you can go back in time and go, these were the values on this singular truck that was assembled. So then so it's, what you're saying then is a defect in design. I don't I'm not, no, I'm not saying anything. There's a lot. There could be a supplier. Yeah. It could be uh, well, manufactured seeing. incorrectly. It could be cost cutting. It could be somebody skipping a step. I don't know. I'm just, I'm just reporting the news. I'm not a commentator here. I'm I'm just uh, I'm just the straight newsman okay. sometimes when I want to be. Okay. Hey, lighting. Did you hear? How about no? Your uh, beloved Ricaro filed for bankruptcy. Yeah. How and why? How are they over leveraged? Well, something or... check this out. According to the German uh, outlet Auto Build, the trade union uh, got the uh, announcement as a surprise. Ouch. And didn't even know it was coming. Uh, Recaros are in the new Ford Raptor R, correct? And yeah, they're in the uh, ZL1. They're in all sorts all of stuff. All sorts of amazing yeah. high-end builds. Great seat. How could a how could a a company like that founded in 1906 that has been uh, you know has been Recaro since 1963 and has done automotive seating, you know, in some of the greatest brands in the world, be here? I think that's yeah, sad. It's like, if not Recaro, like who? Uh, There's lots of seat manufacturers, you, but you, there are very few out there that have that name cachet you, you, that an OE is going to place their There's no, vehicles. like no one's racing out to get a Corbeau. You know what I'm saying? Well, maybe in the aftermarket, but it's, uh, you, you know, nothing wrong with Corbeau. I'm not saying, okay, yeah, they just don't have the cachet in the name. I'm wondering if this is like, you know what can take down a company? A uh, private investment firm? So that, for sure, do we know who Recaro's owned by? Well, the seating firm Adiant sold Recaro Automotive four years ago to Raven Acquisitions. Oh, so, no. Uh, I hey, just, I mean, dude, have, have you seen what's happening in the aftermarket? I mean, all of these acquisitions, they're just bonkers. Ruining the a bunch of It's crazy. There was a time that I think, like, these big investment firms didn't really understand the aftermarket. Yeah, they still and don't. And now they're just coming in, and they're like, I own a steel mill. So I'm going to buy things that are made out of steel. Right. So I can sell my own steel to the wheel company or something yeah, like that. And they don't understand crazy. wheels and they just destroy it. Yeah. They thrift it and they ruin the brand that some, sucks. some dude, some entrepreneur created. Sorry. Tangent, go ahead. <laughs> hey, Lighting, have you heard? No. No, I haven't heard. You'll be happy to know that the uh, Ram HD trucks that are getting uh, a mid-cycle refresh for 25 
Are you ready for this? Yeah. Waiting. Regular cab coming back. Wow. So that's cool, right? I was walking down the block the other night and uh, I go, look at that regular cab, Chevy Silverado. My wife's like, so what? I go, do you understand how rare those are? No, it's awesome. They're only in like racetracks do I see those things. I, I, I would love to get just a regular cab, long bed, just pickup truck. I was, I'd love just like an old 7.3 with a stick just yeah. to move a tractor around. Yeah, you know what like I want? That. I want a 66 Chevy C20, patina it out with like a cool 350 uh, in it. You ruined that magic. Anyway, the latest spy photo. Oh, I didn't tell you. the uh, Remind me to tell you something off air about this. Oh my God. You're going to leave that in the recording. Yeah. Okay. Woo. All right. So this the is a doozy. The latest spy <laughs> photos show that the uh, 2500 Bighorn regular cab long box 4x4 four four, yep. uh, is is happening. And so the regular cab continues to be uh, part of the lineup for 25. So Ram enthusiasts should be extremely happy because uh, you still can't get a regular cab 1500, unfortunately. So I'm interested. Truckshowpodcast at gmail.com. Who out there still loves regular cab pickup trucks and maybe even has non-work truck, regular cab, long bed? I want to hear about it. What about Why'd you choose it? What are you about the dudes that are t- turning TRXs into short be- uh, single cool. cab short beds? That's cool. There's like there's five couple, of them now. A, yeah, there's a few of them out there. I think that's that's pretty awesome. Spy photos say regular cab, ram people, be happy. Hey, Lightning, have you heard? No. No. Uh, remember how I'm like, hey, lighting, this new Grand Wagoneer is pretty awesome. And you're like, no, I hate it. It's ugly. It just Not a fan. Go. No, it's a, it's a big, uh, it's, it's a Suburban wearing a top hat. Well, uh, the 2024 J.D. Power U.S. Automotive Performance Execution and Layout, the appeal study, yeah. uh, has a couple wins. And in the large SUV segment, it's the Jeep Wagoneer. Why are you buzzing that? It's awesome. Didn't you see that guy trying to change like an AC vent and he had to take the yeah. entire interior part? Yeah, so that, that wasn't solid. That's some bogus. Ram is uh, five years in uh, as the second ranked mass market brand in the U.S. appeal study. So uh, people still want Rams and they still want uh, Grand Wagoneers, despite what Lighting thinks. Mm-hmm. Hey, Lighting, have you heard? No. No. no, no, no. no. Uh, you love the Cadillac Escalade, don't you? Uh, I love the one that uh, Gail's daughter, Liz, who actually mm-hmm. runs the day-to-day of our company. Yeah. Uh, she has got this crazy, like, pearlescent, okay, that's deep the, are, green. You're going on tangent again. No, I'm telling you that this We've is freaking awesome. We've talked about it. Lighting, I'm holding up the stop sign. Stop. I'm holding up the stop sign. Yes, I'm pointing I at lighting. like the Escalade Thank you. with now, the diesel. Can I? That's not the, the setup. You're not. You're not good at this. Let me say, lighting, do you, you like the Escalade, right? Yes, I do. You like diesel engines, right? I sure do, homie. No, that diesel Escalade, great vehicle that was well received by the buying public, right? Please don't tell me they're getting rid of it, no, Mr. No, diesel Escalade is going forward. Oh, the, no. Uh, Panic. 2025 Panic. Cadillac Escalade Panic. will not have a diesel, so. <laughs> uh, this is why our shows are eight hours long. Is it hard to play along with me? It's it's hard to do a lot of things <laughs> with you some days. It's uh-huh. definitely it's it's not easy. Mm-hmm. Hey, uh, I'm running out of steam here. Lightning, have you heard? <laughs> no, God, no. No, I haven't heard. You sure? Uh, no, I'm not sure. Of course you're not. No, uh, I've heard a lot of these stories. I just play along. Well, you know the story because you said it to me, and it's the fact that uh, uh, old GM put a patent in for having some sort of drone stuff. With your truck. Oh, yeah. If you break down, they come and find you with a drone. No, no, no. It's, it la- the drone launches out of your own vehicle, which is weird, right? It's like a, it's like, like a, it's part of the vehicle and it detaches. It's like Mr. Roboto or Mr. What is it? Uh, what's that? The flying robot. Yeah, it's, it's Johnny Sacco and the flying robot from the 70s. Do you think our listeners are t- are done with us at this point? We're like, hey, we're going to do a 15 They tuned out 20 minutes ago. All right. Right well, after the intro. On that, on that note, let's. Uh... Let's end it. <laughs> I feel, I mean, we just pa- we we failed. What about the what about the drone? You gonna I, say I anything? About I, it? I don't know. We failed to uh, lower the suckage on this one. Sorry. The only drone we have in this podcast is us <laughs> going on and on. The Truck Show Podcast is a production of Truck Famous LLC. This podcast was created by Sean Holman and Jay Tillis with production elements by DJ Omar Khan. If you like what you've heard, please open your Apple Podcast or Spotify app and give us a five-star rating. And if you're a fan, there's no better way to show your support than by patronizing our sponsors. Giant robot, go! Go!